Welcome back to Every Other Carl. I'm Carl, and today I'm installing vinyl siding on my 10x16 shed. In new construction, vinyl siding is installed directly over house wrap. Since I put that up in a previous video, I'm ready to start siding. First thing I'm going to do is finish up the soffit on the underside of my overhang. I'm just using pressure treated plywood around my overhangs. Typically this would be vinyl, but the plywood works well in this setting. My first real step in this siding install is to prep the corners. I used a piece of my vinyl corner post to measure exactly how far in on either side of the corner it would be nailed. Then I snapped chalk lines up either side to help me get accurate measurements. Now I'm going to take a few measurements. I'm going to go from the bottom of my sheathing where the sheathing meets the foundation up to the underside of my soffit, which is 86 and 3 quarters. So to that 86 and 3 quarters, I'm going to add one inch because I want my corner post to be one inch below that sheathing. So that's going to be 87 and 3 quarters. And on this side, I'm going to go right up that line I just snapped right up to where that line will intersect my angled soffit and that is 96 inches again I'll add an inch to that so that's 97 inches now before I go any further I'm going to transfer those numbers to my corner as a starting point so on the front facing wall it's going to be this side of the corner I have 87 and 3 quarters this side with the angled soffit is going to be 97 inches at the highest point. I'm going to extend those lines across. I'm going to take a couple more measurements. Now, I don't have what's called a bird box, but for all intents and purposes, this could be my bird box. There's a tiny little out and then up here on the front side of the socket. I need a measurement from that line, my chalk line, to the edge of my bird box. It's going to be two inches. And then from the edge of my bird box up to the next highest point, that's going to be an inch and three inches. Now to transfer that to my corner piece, I'm going to come from the edge of my nailing fin, two inches in. And then from there, I'm going to come up an inch and three eighths. Now for what's probably the hardest cut, is figuring out this angle. I'm gonna extend my line all the way to the top of the angle. And then I'm gonna make a 90 degree angle. And I'm gonna measure how far down I came from the top of my angle to this line that is gonna be six and three quarters. That's gonna be the long leg of my triangle. And the short leg is gonna go from the line to the soffit, two and three quarters. Now to transfer that onto my corner here, remember we're coming from the chalk line that we snapped, which is the edge of the nailing fin, is out here. So I'm gonna come from here down six and three quarters, that's the long leg six and three quarters, and then in the short leg here, which was two and three quarters. So that's gonna be the angle. From the highest point on my nailing pin, right down to that lower point. Now the last thing I need to do is bring this upper line on the front side of my building over to this side. and then intersect that line. And that's where I'm gonna cut. All right, so to nail it, I'm gonna put one nail up high. And this is the only nail I'm gonna put it at the top of the nailing slot to hold it up flush up into the corner. I'll go about every 16 inches and 
I'm going to put them in the middle of that nailing slot. And remember, keeping this line right up against my chalk line. All right, there we go. We got about an inch underneath the wall sheathing over the foundation. Nailed just about every 16 inches with about a quarter inch of space between the nail and the wall. So it leaves a little bit of room for expansion and contraction of the plastic. I gotta finish that nail. Uh, angle is nice, wraps around nice and tight, right into all the nooks and crannies. Next thing to do is add J-channel. That's gonna go around the windows and the door. All right, I'm gonna start with my top piece of J-channel. I'm gonna butt it right up against my corner piece. Measure it all the way to my first obstacle, which is my door. Go around any obstacle. I'm not going to go flush up against it. I'm going to go a, just about a quarter inch away from it. Because again, this is going to expand and contract. And I want to have a little bit of room for it to do so. So my door is a little bit unusual because the uh, brick mold comes so close to the underside of the soffit up there. So I'm just going to jam the J-channel up in there. Uh, and then it'll be nailed all the way along uh, until the end of the building. Now around the door, similar to how I did the corners, I'm going to go an inch below the bottom of the wall sheathing to the top of the soffit here. Here that is 86 inches, so I'm going to go 87 inches. And then where it butts up against this top piece of J-channel, I'm going to mark it. I'm going to cut a nice 45 degree angle out of there so that it looks like a little mitered joint. Just remember to leave room for expansion and contraction at the ends of your channel and nail in the centers of the nailing slots. All right, now for the J channel around the windows. This is the more complicated part. All right, for the windows, I cut a piece over the top that is about an inch over. I have a little bit of excess that I can trim off later, but um, it's an inch over the edges of the trim. And then I need to cut tabs out of the ends here. And I happen to have this tool from Home Depot. It cuts tabs. Uh, the only reason I bought it was because it was super damaged and they actually gave it to me for free. Otherwise it's a $45 tool. You can accomplish this with a utility knife, but I have the tool. So for this, Take the tool, stick it into the end, and you're gonna cut it, push it down halfway, and it'll create a tab. And it's gonna look something like this. Now, because I want a mitered corner, I'm gonna cut an angle from here up to the tip of the J channel here. It's gonna look like that. Now, I'm gonna take this, put it right flush up against the edge of my window. All right, now that I have that first cut on my top piece, I'm gonna take the side piece, I'm gonna cut a full notch out of the end of it. Just like that. I'm gonna put the tab from the top piece into the side and run it right up, just like that. It's gonna give me that mitered corner. And with that, I can come over to my other side and get a nice, clean measurement of where to cut this side. Now similar to the top channel for the bottom of your side pieces, you're going to want to make that tab, so don't cut all the way through. Make that tab, and that is going to run down the side and up and tuck under the bottom piece of trim. You can see up here, the side piece comes down. The tab tucks in and under. It's going to give you a nice clean corner. All right, I'll duplicate this side piece over here and then create the bottom piece. All right, the bottom is going to be the same length as the top. Similar to the side pieces, it's going to have notches, full notches on either end. Okay, 
right, here is a finished window. I'll give you a little bit of advice here. So the top piece shingles above the side piece. Any water that comes out the edge is gonna run into the side piece. You come down here, side piece shingles over the bottom piece. Just think of kind of like roofing shingles. And we have that uh, tab that comes under and tucks under the bottom piece. Uh, we have these mitered cuts here. Same on the top. And that is a completed window. All right, there's two more pieces that I need to install. Starter strip, which is gonna go right down at the bottom here. And that's what my first row of uh, siding is gonna hook into. And finishing strip up at the top is gonna be sunk up into this J channel. I'm also gonna install a strip of this um, finishing strip up under the J channel, J channel under my window. So for my starter strip, the goal is to get my all my sheets of vinyl siding to be squared off with the building. I'm measuring my starter strip and it is two and three quarters inches wide. Um, so I know that when I install it at the bottom of the wall here, I'm gonna want it two and three quarters inches up from the bottom of my wall sheathing. And if I take a measurement from the inside top of my J channel up against my soffit, all the way down to that mark, that is gonna be 83 and a quarter inches. So if I come down to this end, and mark that off, I'm gonna put 83 and a quarter inches here, and then I'm gonna snap a chalk line between those two marks. All right, I'm gonna hammer my starter strip in up to that line. The starter strip is installed right to the bottom of the sheathing. It won't be seen, so it doesn't matter if it's a different color than your siding. The finished strip does need to be the same color, and you nail that right inside your top J channel. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do before I start installing my siding is install a couple pieces of finishing strip right underneath the bottom J channel of the windows. All right, let's put a piece of siding in. First thing I'm gonna do is cut it to the length that I need. Um, I'm gonna tuck that end into the corner, and then over here, I'm gonna measure right up to my J channel. And it is tucked in tight over there. So I'm gonna leave, I'm marking it uh, at about half an inch back from the end, that's going to give me a quarter inch on either side. So you want to leave about a quarter inch on either side of your siding here. Uh, it is a hot day, so uh, if it were a cold day, I would leave a little bit more space because right now the vinyl is pretty much expanded as much as it wants to expand. On a cold day, there would be a lot more room to expand. So if it were a cold day, I would leave three-eighths of an inch. This is going to tuck into my J-channel, come up under my starter strip, and I'll work it in there, pop it right into place. It's going to hold itself up without coming down, and it's also free to move side to side a little bit there. All right, I'm gonna make sure it's centered between both ends. And then I'm gonna nail it off just about every 16 inches. Again, I'm not driving these nails all the way home so that the siding can shift side to side. Ideally, I'm gonna find some studs. So, try to nail into a stud. Alright, next 
piece. Once you get going, it's not that hard. Just remember not to nail in all the way and try to hit as many studs as you can. All right, here comes the first piece that has some obstacles to get around. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut this piece the same size as the ones below it. Then I'm gonna put it in place and push it up underneath the J channel of the windows. And I'm gonna loosely put one nail right in the middle here, just to hold it for now. I'll take that back out in a minute. I'm going to mark off all my cuts. The J channels along the window, it's going to be the same deal as the, uh, the ends. I want a quarter inch of space on either end of the cuts between J channels. So here I'm going to mark in Leaving myself at least a quarter inch of space. Alright, now I can pull that nail out. I'm going to take a smaller piece, clip it in temporarily, run it up against the side here, see how far up I'm going to have to cut. I can cut it right, right under that first lap. This piece is going to slip up into the finished strips under the windows, which is what will hold the top tightly since I had to cut the nailing fin off. Alright, I had to trim a little bit of that lip off, but for the most part it hooked up in there. And now it's time for the small pieces. These side pieces were large enough for me to bend into place and snap together as I went. The middle pieces were much smaller and I needed to load them in from the top. Once all the small pieces were in, I could finish up the top. This is a snap lock punch tool that creates little tabs that will hook into the finish strip. Not entirely necessary, but it helps hold everything together. You make these tabs every eight inches or so and then push them up until you hear them click into the finish strip. This is pretty much all the info you need to get going with vinyl siding. J channel around the obstacles, leave room for expansion and contraction, and nail in the middle of the nailing slots. There is something called F-channel that is very common and would be used to hold any horizontal pieces, typically vinyl soffit. I didn't need any on this project, but it follows the same rules. For the entirety of this project, I only used snips to cut the siding. These are straight cut snips that are meant for siding, but you can even get away with simple tin snips. It's way easier to cut vinyl siding when it's warm out. If it were cold, it would be better to cut your pieces with a chop saw with the blade turned backwards. I wanted to show you a trick to getting a smaller piece of siding in between two pieces of J-channel. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. If it's around this size, this is about maybe two feet plus, you put one side in and get your hand behind it and then bend the other side in like that, push it up. Or if your piece is a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, say a foot, a foot plus, um, you might not be able to bend it that much. So another way to do it is to get one side in, bring the other side all the way up where the corner is in, and then push it down into place. Like that. Then you can get it flat and push it right up. Another thing to remember is you want a consistent height as you put your vinyl siding on. So every time I put a piece in, I get up underneath it, push it up, and then hammer it in. So I just put this piece in, I'll push it up tight. I'm not over pushing it, stretching the bottom one out, but just so that it's taut. And then get that nail in. Same thing as I go down the line here. That'll help keep everything consistent. Here's the final product. And, uh, I wanted to show you one extra little tidbit of information. If you look down this direction of the siding, you don't see any seams, and that's intentional. I started from that side and always worked this direction, so my overlaps are on this side of the siding. So if you were to look at the wall from this direction, you would see those seams. So. Starting from this side and moving that, that direction and having my overlaps come this way, that allows for my primary view to be nicely unobstructed by any overlaps.
There's one wall to go, that's this final end wall, and then we'll be done with siding. My wife was able to help me on this last wall, which made the process go way faster. A final note, vinyl siding is not meant to be fully waterproof itself, it works with your house wrap to keep the building dry, so don't go around trying to caulk the joints of your siding. That will just cause problems as it expands and contracts. That's it for my siding install. I'll leave links to some of the products I used in the description. If you have any questions or thoughts as to how I could have done this better, please leave them in the comments section and maybe they'll help out the next person. There's much more to come on this studio shed build, so please subscribe. If you liked the video, please like the video. And until next time, I'm Every Other Carl, and I'll see you.